Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. This video is for Josh. You see, Josh is an eight-year-old kid, or maybe he's 10. I'm not the best judge of such things. All I know is that he's a super fan of the channel, and I just met him about six months ago. And I've got at least two things in common with Josh. We both have ASD, and we both love computers. I gave Josh and his mom a little behind-the-scenes tour of the studio and shop here, and we chatted for a while, and I sent them home with a few souvenirs. Then, a little while later, a letter arrived in the mail. It was Josh, and he was interested in learning C and using it to code on the ESP32 microcontroller. So, I programmed a little LED demo on an ESP32 and mailed it off to him. He ran into some problems when he went to reprogram it on his own, and he kind of got stuck. He wrote me again, and I realized that this would take forever to troubleshoot by US mail, so why don't I just make up a great set of step-by-step -step instructions on how to program an ESP32 all the way from scratch and send it to him. And then I remembered I have this YouTube channel. So I figured I'd just make a video for Josh that if I could teach an eight-year-old how to flash an ESP32, then I could probably teach you as well. Big picture then, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna plug an ESP32 module into the USB port and then install the software needed to allow us to write a simple program that we will load onto the ESP32. I'll show you every step of the way and explain what each step is for. And I'll include links to all of the parts used in the video description, which is really one part, an M5 module. So if you follow along, you should be able to replicate my results exactly. Once we have the Arduino IDE installed, to write code for this module specifically, we have to install a board file and a library, and we'll do those steps as well. Then we'll write some code to blink the onboard LED, upload it to the chip, and make sure it works. But with that, it's time to stop talking and start chalking, so let's install some software. Okay, to show you there's no man behind the curtain, we're going to start with a blank PC, just insert the USB-C cable, plug it into the module, which has something on its display, but yours will start out blank. And that's all we need to do. Of course, it's not much good without software, so let's go and install the Arduino IDE. We'll search for that in Google, and we'll go to the official website. Once we get there, we'll accept all cookies. Then we'll click on the Windows Download. We'll do just download because I've already donated at least once before. And we'll wait for the download to complete. And with the download ready, we'll click on Open File, which will kick off the installer. We'll agree to the terms. We'll say just for me, so we'll take all the defaults all the way through this installation. And when the download is complete, we'll be given the option of running the Arduino IDE, so we'll leave that checked, and we'll click Finish to launch the IDE. When it first comes up, you'll need to approve a number of prompts, like giving it internet access and so on, as well as installing some serial port drivers, and they all seem to be signed, so I think it's safe to go ahead and do so. So we'll just keep clicking Install and step on through the installer, There'll be a few admin prompts as well shortly, which we have to accept in order to move through it. So we'll say yes. And when we're done, we're presented with the IDE. The first thing we have to do is to tell it what board we're using. So we'll go to the boards menu and I'll type in ESP32 and you'll notice, well, there are no results because out of the box, it doesn't support the ESP32. So we have to do one bit of magic and I've put the text that you need in the video description, but we have to copy and paste one line of text into our preferences under the additional boards manager URLs. And so we'll paste that URL right into here. We'll say okay. And very shortly, we'll see we now have an ESP32 install option. And so we'll click on that and that will proceed through the install. Yours will take several minutes, but thanks to the magic of my 2000 core machine or post-processing, mine goes pretty quickly. Now that we have ESP32 support installed, we want to go to the library manager and search for the M5 stick. We're gonna look for M56C+, plus because that's what we're using in this case. I've already installed it, so it says remove only here, but if yours will say install, and you should just click install and wait for it to complete. With the library support added, let's select our board by going into the menu and selecting the unknown on the COM5. Your COM port may be different. In here, we'll look for M5 stick. There we go, M56C. And we'll set that as our port by clicking OK. Let's make sure the right board is indeed selected here. We'll go into the boards menu. I can already see it says N56C. If yours does not, go to the ESP32 menu, scroll down. Mine should already be selected when we get there. If yours is not, select M5 stick C. And the first thing we'll want to do is include the M5 header file for all of the M5 specific functionality. Then we'll want to set the pin mode on the output pin for the LED to be output. 
And we're going to blink it by setting the LED to the high state and then delaying a little bit, then setting it to the low state, delaying a little bit, and we'll do that in our loop. And let's verify the code by compiling it now. And once we see that it compiles, we can select Upload to upload it to the actual chip. That we use our COM port already selected and talk to it, assuming it's the board we've specified. Having done everything right so far, we can see that it's uploading, and so let's have a look at the chip. And there you have it. As soon as the upload completes and the chip reboots, the LED is blinking away. You can see it in the corner there. It's not extremely bright, but it does light up. It's the internal LED hidden underneath the uh, rubber covering. Blinking an LED is all well and good, and it serves as a great proof of concept that you've got everything working end to end and you can run your own code. But you likely want to be able to take the next step. So let's see if we can't take advantage of the little OLED screen on the M5 and display Hello World on it. We can do that in as little as about three lines of additional code. Let's take a look. Let's add the code to display hello world on the LED. First, we'll call M5 begin to initialize the M5. Then we'll call fill screen with zero, which will fill it with black, and we'll print hello world. From there, we'll click upload, and we'll let the chip do its little dance. Whoops, got a little typo there. LCE should be LCD. Let me fix that. And I'm sure it will compile much better second time around which it does, and so we can click Upload. And with it uploaded to the chip and the chip reset, let's have a look to see our results. There we go, Hello World and a couple lines of code. It's a pretty small font because I did not set the font, so we're just getting the default smallest font, which is why it's pretty hard to read, but you can see it, Hello World. Now, if you happen to have any interest in matters related to Asperger's or ASD, or if you live with or work with or love someone who's on the spectrum, be sure to check out my book on Amazon, Secrets of the Autistic Millionaire. It's got nothing to do with money and everything to do with living a successful life on the spectrum. It's everything I know now that I wish I'd known back then. If you found today's episode to be any combination of informative or entertaining, I'd be honored if you'd consider subscribing to my channel and perhaps leaving a like on the video. And if you've already subscribed, I encourage you to turn on the notifications option to help compensate for my somewhat sporadic release schedule. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. In the meantime and in between time, hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. Oh, and if this is Josh, I'm mailing you the M5, so you should have it in the mail probably about the time this video comes out or within several days after that. So good luck, buddy.